welcome back to another episode of medieval dynasty perfect so we are um we decided we were going to last time go and do the unigas story so i'm gonna run over to gustovia uh talk to unigast and go from there see you in a minute all right unigast where are you there you are. Let's put the spear away. Hi, Rosamir. Are you getting settled? The valley is treating me nicely so far. That's wonderful, Rosamir. But you come at a poor time. My duties at Castellan await me. Of course, I understand. Is everything all right? Yes, it is. I'm not sure, to be honest. There's been a murder. Oh, my. I thought things like that didn't happen here too often. Because they don't. I'm just about to go to the crime scene and question the witness, and I honestly don't know what to expect. Remember, everybody lies. Huh? I've actually met a limp medic once that used to say that a lot. Medic that couldn't heal himself. I'm sure he was great at his job. Jokes aside, Rasamir, this is a really serious matter. I won't be able to share more stories with you at the moment, but I believe there is someone you should meet. His name is Sambor. He was one of us. The pack, I mean. Are you serious? And he lives here in the valley? That's right. All of them do, actually. Here, I've marked Sambor's house on your map. You should pay him a visit. Great, I'll go there right away. But beware, calling Sambor friendly is like calling being stung by a bee right on the tip of your manhood pleasant. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you're exaggerating. He was part of the reminders after all. Don't say I didn't warn you. I'll be on my way then. All right, looks like he's over there that direction so we'll run out that way see you guys in a minute unless i come across the cart <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that worked out better than I thought. I'm going to start hunting small animals because we don't only need food, but we need hunting experience. So if I see any more, I'm going to hunt them on the way. Oh, and look, a little bit of treasure. More mead and a stone axe. I'll take them and we'll leave the logs for now. I get a feeling that this is the place. Yep, this appears to be it. Sambor. I think you're lost, boy. Sorry, I didn't mean to dis... Wait a second. Look me in the eye and stop shivering for crying out loud, huh? Black and blue, you're Jordan's family, aren't you? Yeah, my name's Rosimir. You must be Sambor, then. And how do you know that? I was talking with Unigost, and he told me you were part of the Reminders as well. Part of what now? Uh, the pack? The one with Unigost and Jordan? I've never heard that idiot name in my life. I'm sorry, uh, maybe I made a mistake. We were called the Undying Fist. Now that's a whole lot better name. You're damn right it is. That's because I came up with it. Everyone loved it. No idea why Unigas lied to you like that. I'm sure he's just jealous of your creativity. Ah, of course he is. And uh, not only about that. Anyway, I would love to hear some stories about my uncle and the pack's adventures altogether. That's an amazing coincidence, because I'd love to spend my time telling old tales by a crackling fire. Oh my, really? No, leave my property and forget where it is. Oh, come on, it'll only be a moment. A moment of a moment, really. Just tell me, what was my uncle like? How did he become part of the the Undying Fist? And um, what did you do as, exactly as the pack? You don't know what we did? Unigas didn't get to that part yet. Eh, all right, but be quiet and try to be less annoying. Hmm. Where should I begin? Right. 
It all started when Jordan left his home. He was 18 at the time, if I remember correctly. The clever bastard was always too big of a fish for his birthplace, and he knew that. Left as soon as he could. But cleverness at such a young age always means two things. Being arrogant and hot-headed. His plan was to set out on a big adventure. That's it. Pretty detailed, huh? A path that is paved with skeletons of young idiots. But none of them was Jordan, either way. He was wandering for days. Days turned into weeks and his rations into dust. He is useless as a hunter, back then at least. So berries and mushrooms is all he could get. So obviously he needed some coins. He came across a manor with orchards so vast they seemed like an ocean. Jordan managed to find some work there. A week of backbreaking labor had passed. His hands are covered in blisters, skin red from the scorching skin, knees pulsating from pain. I must say, you're a really amazing storyteller. I wasn't expecting that. Shut up. Do you want me to finish? Where was I? All right. He is exhausted from all strenuous work he's done. Went to the Lord of the Manor with a smile on his face to collect the payment. His stomach was already full with the fantasies of all the delicious treats he's dreaming of buying. And all that was ruined by the hand of the Lord handling, holding a couple lousy coins. Jordan was furious. That is merely a fraction of the pay he was supposed to acquire. He started shouting at the Lord, demanding justice. Peasants were just flies to the Lord, disgusting replaceable insects. And what do you do with a fly that buzzes too loudly? Both of the Lord's palms struck Jordan's ears with the strength of an ox. Jordan fell to the ground stunned, and the Lord's guards threw him out of the manor like garbage, stealing the few pathetic coins while doing so, if I may add. It wasn't until evening when Jordan regained his hearing... And with it came a fervent thought. Thought of revenge. Your uncle was quite a capable fighter when I met him ten years later, but he wasn't back then. He knew the guards would massacre him if only he came close. So, he needed to find another way to fulfill his vengeance. Jordan was always ambitious, but he, his, that hatred fueled him like nothing before. And what happened next? What came later was me becoming bored of this conversation. Go away. No way, you can't leave me like this. I can do whatever I want. Scram, I have things to do. What things? I'll do them for you. I'll do anything you want. Just please tell me the whole story. Damn, you're annoying. No, I'm not. See? What an annoying thing to say. Okay, you can help me. Seems like I won't get rid of you any other way. Just say what needs to be done. You won't regret it. Here, grab this shovel. It's a piece of crap, but it'll do. There's a clay deposit behind my house. Go there and dig up some clay for me. On it, boss. Now, did he give me the shovel or... Oh, he did give me the shovel. There it is. My bad. Wooden shovel. Put that on six. And he said clay, right? Clay. Clay. These. What the hell is that? Oh, it's a... What is that? Strange deer figure? What the hell are these? Um, uh, why the hell are there so many of them? Do, ooh, can I sell them? Wine bottles. I know, I'm getting distracted, I'm sorry. But there's pretty little deer figures. They're everywhere. Oh. So dig up clay deposits and pick up clay. So there's some clay. We'll dig up this deposit and the other one. <coughs> uh, no, stop. Okay, and now another clay deposit. Wonder if these respawn after like a season or a year or two. Deer figurine. Gonna grab that and uh there's another one. Do I get an achievement for collecting all these or something? Any more? Any more?
And now I'm carrying too much to run, of course. Wonder if I can ask Sambor about these. I bet you he made all of them. Where the hell did he go? There he is. Lazy bastard, get out of your house. You have it. Here's all the clay you wanted. Will you finish the story now? All right, all right. So, as I already said, Jordan wasn't much of a fighter back then. He didn't have any money nor connections, but he had one thing. An unusual ability, you see, from an early age, Jordan was an exceptionally good liar. No sweaty palms, no voice cracks, no tells, really. Calm, steady breaths, eye contact held all the way. He eventually managed to handle any kind of pressure, even in the craziest situations. But it wasn't that at first. He felt no pressure lying, no stress at all. It was as natural for him as breathing. He had absolutely no remorse. He came up with a plan. A plan so immensely moronic and unrealistic that it really hard to believe that it worked so perfectly. At first, he convinced the nearby town's tailor to sew him a whole set of clothes worthy of the most wealthy nobleman. The finest of fabrics, silken threads, you name it. Horrendously expensive. So how did he man it? So how did he manage to afford it, you may ask? It's simple. He didn't pay for it. So he stole it. I said no such thing. Jordan wasn't a thief. Not in the traditional meaning of the word, at least. Apart from that, did I finish the damn story? <clears throat> While wearing his new clothes, he traveled to the castle of the king of that realm and entered it. Okay, okay. Now I know you're making this all up. That's simply impossible. <laughs> you're absolutely right. It is. It's mad to even consider trying to pull that off. But Jordan, he just walked right in. I don't blame you for doubting me. Damn. I'd have been the first to doubt a thing like that if I didn't see him do it a hundred times later with my own eyes. Anyway, he walked right into the castle. And once he was there, he followed through with his plan. Which was... Betting his wife. Whose wife? The king's. The king's wife? Mm-hmm. So, the queen? Indeed. So let me get this straight. The plan was to get into the castle and lay with the queen? Exactly that. You're right. This is the most absurdly idiotic plan I've ever heard of. I told you, but it worked like a charm. I still don't get it. What worked? What did he accomplish by that? After the lovemaking, he dressed up, deliberately leaving his undergarments on the bedside, and told the queen he'll be right back with some refreshments. Then he went to one of the king's guards and told them that he saw the queen in the company of a strange man sneaking into one of the chambers. The guard rushed in and witnessed the queen naked in bed with a man's clothes right next to her. As a loyal servant, the guard reported the matter directly to the king himself, who, as you can probably imagine, became furious, to say the least. He couldn't really punish his wife. That'd be bad for his reputation, but he could pursue her lover. Unfortunately for him, at this point, Jordan was long gone from the castle. Riding a beautiful bay mare he borrowed from the stable at sunset. I uh, still don't get it. You see, the king didn't catch that filthy seducer, but it didn't mean he couldn't track him down and find him. To do so, the only track he could follow was the one thing Jordan left behind, except the undergarments and the pleasurable memory for the queen. His name. Not his real name, of course. The name he used when introducing himself to the queen was the Lord of the Orchards. Precisely. Now you get it. <laughs> That's incredible. The Lord's head must have left the company of his body pretty promptly. He didn't get killed. That wouldn't be Jordan's style. The queen begged for his life to be spared, so the king threw him in the dungeon and he spent the rest of the days he had left. Jordan was amazing. All that with just the power of his wits and speech. He surely showed the Lord that he shouldn't have wronged him. Don't get me wrong. Don't get the wrong idea about his reasons. Jordan didn't get through all that just because he wanted just because of what the Lord did to him you see the Lord was a cruel merciless brute he mistreated all of his subjects killed for fun raped for sport people used to call him the laundryman because of one of his habits of drowning his bastards in the lake right after birth like unwanted kittens Jordan needed to stop him and he did but that's not the end of the story after the Lord's capture someone had to take his place he didn't have any rightful successors but then with just an uncannily perfect timing came a distant cousin of the Lord's, a charming young man with two different eyes. You've got to be kidding me. He easily acquired all the possessions of his sentenced relative, but Jordan didn't want any of that, not for himself. So he took only three bags of coins from the treasury and left everything else in the hands of the peasants. They were elated. 
He is still probably worshipped there, I can tell you that. Oh, and one more thing. Why three bags, you might ask? That's easy. One for the tailor, another for the stableman he took the horse from, and the last one for himself. With the exact amount of coins he was rightfully supposed to earn for his work in the orchard. I told you, Jordan wasn't a thief, and that was it. He mounted his beautiful mare and left the realm, continuing his adventures. At least, that's the story he used to tell us, so nothing of that may be true. <laughs> but that's how it was with Jordan. Now I understand what you and Unigos were talking about. He really does seem surreal. I've never met anyone else like that. Don't get me wrong, he has his flaws. But the things he could do... His tongue wasn't even silver. It was made of pure gold. But wait, why didn't you tell me... You didn't tell me what the purpose of the of the Undying Fist. Oh, I thought that'd be obvious now. On the day Jordan's... On that day, Jordan's mission was born. He knew that the spoiled, rotten elites like that were scattered all around the world, draining life and dignity from the hard-working, simple folk. And that he was capable of stopping them. To some extent, at least, so that... That's exactly what he started doing. Overthrowing corrupted lords and giving back to the community. He sounds like a hero. A true hero. Well, it wasn't like... I mean, he, um... Yeah, I guess you could say that. So how did you join the pack? Jordan was working solo until he met Unigos. That rat's agile fingers could work where Jordan's tongue didn't. And then they needed someone with other talents that they were lacking. Like strength, manliness, bravery, independence, gallantry, integrity. Right, I think I get the picture. So they recruited the best there was. I was between jobs at the time, so I gave them a chance, and finally, the pack started to make a real difference. But I don't like to brag. Oh yes, I noticed. Humble to the bone. Thank you for noticing. People at my level don't need to boast about our skills. Just like the sun doesn't need to prove it's bright. Anyhow, I already spoke more words to you than I did in the last five years to anybody. So it's time for you to go and preferably don't come back ever. It was a great pleasure and a true honor. Yeah, I don't care. Leave now. And in return for giving away my location, deliver a delicious meal to Unigost. It's his favorite. A knuckle sandwich. Um, do you want me to hit him in the face? Did I stutter? No, sir. Of course, sir. I'm on my way, sir. Wow, it is really dark. Can I sleep in... Nope. Uh, can I sleep at this one? Nope. Um, let me see if I can build a campfire here really quick. I do not have any sticks. Let's get a few sticks. Let me get a few sticks really quick. I'll sleep through the night and I'll see you guys in the morning. All right. So here we are in the very rainy morning. We're going to go back to the house, but we're going to kill us a wolf first. Oh, crap. No! Die, damn it. Okay, never mind. We're going to run. All right, here we are back at Gastovia, the uh, east gate. Let's find Unigod. There he is. Talk to this guy. It's always nice to see you, Rasimir. Unigas, hello. I've talked with Sambor. He's a real sweetheart, isn't he? The sweetest, like a jar of honey. That's Sambor for you. I see. He did tell me about my uncle, though. The story about the Lord of Orchards. He has some unexpectedly good storytelling skills, doesn't he? Yes, he really does. I was downright astonished by that. One time, I swear, he went for over a year without speaking a single word. But when we were sitting by the fire, he remembered some anecdote laughed out loud and began his tale. Went from a total mute to a master of ceremonies. The narrative was so gripping it was hard not to listen. He even did voices. But after finishing, he became silent again. I never fully understood that side of him. A theater genius trapped in the body of a bear wrestler. He actually asked me to give you something. Really? What was that? A uh, knuckle sandwich? Yeah, sounds exactly like Sambor. So are you going to deliver? Can't. I'm afraid I lost it along the way. 
smart lad. But if he asks, I'll tell him you knocked me out cold. Just out of curiosity, what did Samber tell you about him becoming part of the pack? He said you were looking for the best recruit and that he was the obvious choice. Yeah, that seems like something he would say. Well, he was clearly full of crap. It's not a pleasant memory, but I believe you deserve to know the whole story. We didn't recruit him. Well, I guess we did. Jordan did, but that wasn't a matter of choice. When Jordan and I started to follow his mission together, we were rather successful. Everything was going smoothly. Too easy, even. We were doing a lot of good, putting many well-deserved smile on oppressed faces. But that's when we let our guards down. There was a secret guild formed by a few higher-ranking knights and barons. We called them the Vendors. Bunch of really heartless bastards. Their most lucrative business was selling living merchandise. And no, I'm not talking about animals. Please don't say it. Slavery was strictly forbidden in the realm. The queen was adamant about that. Well, the vendors had their own set of rules to follow. They caged them like cattle, mostly women and children, forced to fight like rats for poor little rations when they were given, uh, that they were given in the damp dungeon they were held in. The guild preferred quantity over quality. So they don't even care about diseases and they didn't tend wounds. Well, I think I'm gonna be sick. Sometimes it took weeks to get the dead out of the cages. Survival of the fittest, or rather, outlasting of the least fortunate. It was simply horrible. If you ask me, all the damn guild deserves a cruel and slow death. But it wasn't how we operated. Jordan made it very clear from day one we were never to take a life. That was his most important rule. Anyway, we managed to get everyone out. The carriage is full of broken people. Even the horses kept their heads low in mourning. The despair in the air was even more poisonous than the stench of the rotting flesh. And in all that, we, found, we forgot to make ourselves safe as well. We were caught by the mercenaries who brought us to the torture chamber. Yeah, this gruesome place that had an even worse room hidden inside. Unbelievable. The vendors weren't in their patient mood, so they sent their worst torturer right away. I was horror struck, truly petrified could barely breathe. Jordan didn't say a word, just looked at me. His eyes were relaxed but focused. I realized he wanted me to be calm as well, so I just couldn't. He went first. The torturer strapped Jordan to a chair and just started swinging. His fists were like anvils. Every hit drew blood and broke bones. In a matter of seconds, Jordan's face looked like a bloody pulp. The only thing poking through it was his smile. It was one of the many times I wondered if he was even human. The torturer quickly realized that he needed different tools for such a unique specimen and went to grab his blades. That's when Jordan started talking. He was making him offers, one after another, but the torturer just kept carving his torso. Like he was preparing a steak to be grilled. There was so much blood I could taste it in my mouth. I wanted to pass out, just to run away from all that, but I couldn't. My heart was pounding way too fast. That's horrible. Suddenly, the torturer stopped. He looked at me and back at Jordan. This was the only thing he said. If you're lying, you're gonna be... You're going to watch me do the same to him. I was just about to puke, but Jordan just nodded. So he untied us both and helped us escape. There were more mercenaries on our way, heavily armed. No one stopped us. Even they were terrified of that guy. We managed to get out in one piece. Well... We managed to get out alive. Jordan wounds wouldn't heal for weeks, and even after that, he was scarred very badly. It looked like he had chainmail stitched to his skin, but we had escaped death, and its emissary became one of us. The torturer, it was Samber, wasn't it? Yes. I have no words. I'm sorry this happened to you. Don't be. The path we walked on, it was our choice. We knew the risk. How could you want a person like that amongst your troop? You think I wanted that cutthroat anywhere near me? I couldn't get a wink of sleep around him for days. I was constantly watching my back, watching his every move. So why didn't you blow him off? That's simple. Jordan made a deal with him. Promised him the only thing that mattered to the brute, which was money. A whole lot more than the guild was paying him and a cut from every heist we did. But couldn't you just pay him off or run away? That's not the way Jordan did things. He was a master liar, but when he gave someone his word for real, he never backed down. Besides, as we later found out, Samber wasn't evil in his nature. 
He was a true soldier. He did what was asked of him. Jordan spent hours talking with him, explaining our rules of conduct. Sambor never broke any of them. Not once. That's incredible. Your lives, I mean, I don't think I'd be able to handle all that. Honestly, I hope you'll never have to. I've been through a lot, and after all these years, the thing I wish you the most is to have a boring, steady life. Well, compared to your stories, boring sure sounds pleasant. Then I have a special request of you. This will help achieve that boredom. Sure thing. What do you need? I need you to go to Borrow, find Ida, and get my scythe back from her. Consider it done. Okay. I'm going into the settings, and I am going to see... Oh, jeez. Um, yeah, that'll do it. Let me turn the volume of absolutely everything down just a little bit. Accept those changes. Ah, uh, much better on the sounds. Uh, whoops, took a... Oh, knock it off. There, my mouse glitched out on me for a second. Um, okay, so we need to go across the way to get the scythe from Ida. And then once we've completed this Unigos quest, we're going to sleep until the summer season. No, we still want to farm. That's right. Um... Now, apparently I smell, so I'm going to... She's not too far away. I bet you she's in the village that's normally visible across the way. Um, I'm going to speed this up. I'm going to go over to the village. I'm going to wash up on the way there, and I'll see you in a minute. Here we are in uh, <clears throat> Barrow, where this woman needs... Uh, hello, do I know you? Hello, Ida. I'm here for Unigas side. Take a hike, kid. I want it fair and square. One? Ah, that little snake, you didn't even tell you about that, huh? That figures. I don't know what you mean. He only wanted me to get his side back. It's my side now. Okay, okay, relax. What can I do to get your side then? You can buy it from me, of course, or we could play for it. Uh, what's the game? The same that made Unigos lose all his money and a scythe. <laughs> a game of riddles. How is it played? Simple. I tell you three riddles. You must answer all of them correctly. One mistake and the game is over. Over. You win and you get the scythe. And if I lose? I'll go easy on you this time. If you lose, you don't owe me anything. You'll just forfeit the chance of getting the scythe for free. Ah, crap. Okay, hit me with the riddles. First one. What disappears the second you say its name? Oh, that's an easy one. It's not dust, a little girl, a tree, a wind. It is silence. Correct. Ready for the next one. Here it is. Feed me and I live, yet give me a drink and I die. What am I? Well, not a horse. Not a shadow. I think it's fire, yeah. Oh, you're good, dear. Better than Mr. Big Castellan already. But can you get the final one? Listen carefully. I can fly, but I have no wings. I can cry, but I have no eyes. Wherever I go, darkness follows me. What am I? A cloud. Damn, you're sharp. Congratulations. You win this old man's crappy scythe. Doesn't get better than that. Thank you for the game. I had fun. Take care. All right. So we're going to take this back to Unigast, and then we're going to sleep until next season so that we are... Frick. We're going to take this back to Unigast, and then we're going to go back home, and we're going to plant 
what crops we do have so that they're ready next season. All right, we're back here in town. So let's go talk to Unigost and the kids who crap their pants. Yep. Yeah. All right. You're back already? Hey, Unigost, I got your scythe. Splendid. Were there any troubles on the way? You tell me, were there? I might have left a teeny tiny detail out. You don't say. How did you manage to get my scythe back then? With my wits. In that case, you're brighter than me. Was there ever any doubt? Don't be cocky, kid. Anyway, I have news. Sambor is looking for me. For you. For me, are you sure? I've been told he asked for the one with the funny eyes and stupid face. Aha, I see. Okay, then I won't prolong this humiliation and I'll go find him. Not right now, I won't. Screw you. We're going back to... Oh, wait. I want to see if we can sell all those horse figures. The... Where, were, where? Strange deer figures. It says that they're worth 30 each, which... That's quite a haul. Let me see. Can I sell them to... Kitchen hey, Lady. Show me your wares. I've got it. 330. Just like that, we have 330 coins. Awesome. Now, I am going to keep... I'm going to get rid of the mead. Hmm. We'll just keep whatever else we have. Goodbye. Right there. And we will run home. I'll see you guys when we get there. And we are going to start a farm. Whatever that takes. All right. Whew. Back at the village. Or, uh, right now my, uh, lonely estate. Now, we wanted to start a farm. So, first things first, it, farming. Okay, can I, I can't do a barn. Okay, but I only need like 10 technology. I wonder if I'm supposed to unlock that by creating the fields. I don't know. Let's get in here, open that, take some roasted meat, and actually I'm gonna take as much as I can. No, I'm not, I'm an idiot. Uh. Put our coins in there. Oh, wow. We got way more than I thought. We have 720 coins. We're doing great. Uh, I'm going to grab the morels. I'm going to grab. I'm going to leave the rest of it. Empty wood bowl. Wine bottle. Wheat. Wool fabric. Don't need the normal torch right now. I'm going to break that stick. Roasted meat we're good with. We're going to keep that. We're going to drop the hops. And the feathers and the copper spear for now. And the clay, which weighs a ton. What's that leave us with? Oh, we're not quite there yet. So we'll get rid of those. And the animal feed. All right, cool. So uh, what do we need to plant stuff? Uh, we need the apple trees, and that takes us up to our carrying capacity. I think we should do, like, we should do, like, an orchard up here. Maybe we will clear out some of these trees. But the question is, how many of each tree do we need? Hmm. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's see what it takes to actually craft one. Buildings, farming, orchard. Uh, okay. So I, this is either where I get to plant the tree or it's like the corner of it. So let's go wonder if I can plant on like these really funky bits. Oh, wow. That's huge. Oh, okay. Uh, two, three. So one by four, two, three, four, five. Let's start with 16 fields. Fields are arranged in tiles. Every single one can hold a different plant type. 
Fields require several agricultural treatments like grubbing, fertilizing, plowing, sowing, gathering vegetables, and harvesting grains. Holy crap. Uh, need a hoe. I don't think I have the materials to craft the hoe. I need a log. Okay. So let's get a log. And I'll try and keep my uh, farms all lined up for those with CDO like me. Okay, chop this. Grab. I don't think we need to grab all the logs, but I'm, I'm stupid. So here we go. Um, yeah, definitely dropping the logs. And uh, not in the way that that is typically said out loud. Wooden hoe. We'll put that on four. There we go. Um, is... Oh! Okay. Cloud. Now I need a bag with seed. But wait, I have the saplings. Do I still need a bag? I guess so. Maybe I have to use the bag in order to plant. Do that. Okay, so I can build food storage. Did I not... Oh, I didn't plow the very bottom. Whoops, my bad. Okay, I think that was all eight. Uh, or all 16, I guess. Uh, now I have to figure out how to make a bag. Wait, was there a bag in this? There is a bag in this. I need three leather. Um, do I have three leather? Or do I need to go hunt something? Oh, we're about to find out, I guess. I think I left the leather in my house. But then again, maybe not. Grab this. Leather. I have exactly three leather. Okay. Um, cue this, that. I hope this bag counts. Because I think it called the other one sack. Simple bag. Okay. Um... Simple bag, select seed, orchard, apple trees. Cool. So, plant apple tree. Not sure how the bag is losing durability when all I'm doing is taking the stuff out of it like this, but, uh, whatever. That's my only gripe with this game, is that the durability has always been really, really off. Whoops. Oh, I'm out of apple seeds because I put that one there because I'm an idiot. No, um, that's fine. It can go there. And then let's do another orchard, like, right next to it. Yeah. Uh, need the hoe. Need to do building this. How much? So I have 10 out of 10, but I haven't unlocked the barn. Okay. Uh, where's the corner? There, there, there's the corner, yeah. 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 Go this way, and this way, and this way. Okay, so that's the exact corner. We're going to go one, two, three, and then we'll just create another two by eight. Please. Oh, damn. <sighs> Fine. Cut down this tree. Going to cut it down the right way, though. Get rid of the stump, too. Boom. Got rid of the stump. Uh, let me just put down this. Okay, screw this. We're going to do this when there's light. Because uh, even I'm having a hard time seeing. So we'll sleep until the morning. We'll finish putting the farm and farm fields up. 
and then we will go sleep through the end of the season. Go away. Beautiful. Okay. Let's run up here. Oh, wait. Let me grab the other saplings and the beetroot seeds. So transfer all of those. And what were the other saplings? Pear tree saplings. Okay. Now I'm encumbered again. But that shouldn't much matter. This game is very, very pretty. I like it. Hope you guys are enjoying watching it. I'm trying to keep the episodes as concise as possible. I know there's lots of travel time and whatnot, but don't let me go, damn it. Um Okay. Up here. Not that one. This one, not that one. Dude, you've done this a dozen times. What are you? Okay, one. Two, three. Grab this one. Two by eight. Okay. And then let's hoe. Ah, there it is. Come on. Wow, damn it. We got the barn. I think we need the barn for like fertilizer or something. And I don't know when we're going to need that or if that's something we have to do at like the end of a season or something. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, we should rename our orchards too. Excuse me. Let's see. Go into here, management, fields, orchard. So orchard number one, we're going to hit H, custom name. We're going to call it apple. Orchard number two, we're going to call pear. Oh, what? Oh, whoops. H, apple. Orchard number two, we're going to call pear. And if I'm not mistaken, when you hover over it... Nope, it sure don't. Never mind. I lied. Uh, let's plant the pears. And I only have seven pear saplings? I don't know why I thought I had eight. Oh, that was it. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then, so we have two orchards. Should we put some crops right next to them? Like, you know, a, a field of crops. I have a feeling that we should. So we're going to grab this. We're going to go to crops. We're going to set the corner. Yes. One, two, three. Start here. Oh, those plots are smaller. Uh, in that case, 8, 16, 24, we'll do 24. Or should we do the max? I wonder what the max is. How big? Oh, 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 oh. Um. Oh! So it'll go 16... Looks like 16 is the upper limit for both directions. Okay. Uh... Hell, we'll just do a 16 by 16. Probably going to go through like 10 hoes getting it all prepared, but um, let's give it a shot. Uh-oh. Uh, I see that it says it's going to need fertilizer for this first step, so maybe the ground's not good to grow in yet. Where do we get fertilizer? How much fertilizer do we need? Just one per plot, yeah? Ah, there was my frickin' hoe. 
<sighs> Craft another one real quick. And I'm hungry. Let me see what I have in my inventory to eat. I have roasted meat. Let's eat. Eat, 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 eat. And then I should have a water skin with some water in it. There we go. Perfect. I think that's the fullest my belly has been since we got to the valley. So one thing that I did figure out just a moment ago is you don't have to look down to plow. You can actually just walk and it'll plow wherever your feet are. Ah, save some time and the headache of staring at the ground for who knows how long. Oh, uh, so uh, my questions, I said I was going to ask questions. I don't think I've asked a question in an episode or two. Maybe I have and, you know. Memory and attention span of a rat in a burning meth lab, remember? Uh, because I sure don't. Hey, farming! Let's, uh, skill up really quick. Go into farming. We're gonna do, of course, the, uh, learn more, faster farming. And we'll go from there. Um, my question is in regards to how the episodes have been edited so far with the speed ups. Uh, do you want me to keep doing that? Or do you want me to start cutting out the travel time and whatnot when it's not interesting? Holy crap, that really broke fast. Um, so keep editing the way I'm editing and keep the episodes about the same length that they are. Or... Um, hmm... I'm going to do Force of Nature, and then that, because that's our two-point level. So do I keep editing the way I'm editing, or would you guys like to see a little more concise uh, episodes? More concise episodes where we just focus on... Um... Jeez, I'm so scattered. Where we just focus on the, the interesting bits. You let me know in the comments below. My other question for you is how dialogue has been going. I know that there's a lot of dialogue. It's a story-driven game. That's one of the charms of it. But if you guys are finding it annoying having me read everything, or, um, or not, if you enjoy me reading out all the dialogue so that you understand the story for what very little a... Um, well, I unlocked something else. I knew building a big field was going to be a good idea. Uh, if you like my dialogue uh, so you know what the story is, great. Let me know in the comments below. If you prefer that I cut out all the dialogue, um, essentially this game is a simulator game. It's not necessarily a normal video game because there's a lot of just tedium that comes with a simulator game. You get to experience every single piece. Um, if you're just interested in the simulator side of things, I can still we can still talk about stuff and you guys can ask questions that I can bring up in in uh, videos and whatnot. Um, you know, this, it'll all work out. Um, you guys just tell me what you want. If you want to follow the story along more, which was the original request for this uh, this series, then we'll keep doing what we're doing. But if, uh, if that tedium becomes too much, let me know. Holy crap. Well, look at that. We're leveling up left and right here because uh, farming actually levels up really, really quick. Because <laughs> you have to do so much for it. Um, <clears throat> but I also did want to give a shout out to Lindsay. She's the subscriber that I, at least I hope it's a she. Um, sorry, Lindsay, if for some reason you're a dude. I've met dude Lindsay's, but uh <laughs> she's the one that actually asked for this series and wanted a deeper dive into the lore and storyline uh so i'm probably going to keep the storyline stuff in there but i figured i'd kind of ask what everybody else wants to see because uh well i want lots of people to watch my series and so that i can eventually do this full time by the way as of recording this episode i have 19 subscribers. Woo! 
Woo! That's right, 19 whole subscribers. At least I hope they're whole. I hope nobody cut themselves in half just to give me two subscriptions. But uh, I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. I hope to keep uh, I hope to keep providing entertainment that you find worthy of uh, watching. So please let me know uh, what I can do to maintain that or tweak things. I I'm always willing to try something. And, uh, I mean, the understanding, more or less, that I've gotten from my subscriptions is that this is, you know, their channel, they get to make all the final decisions, but the suggestions are nice, and I, honestly, I've made a lot of changes based on the suggestions that I've gotten, some of them directly from friends and family, some of them from new friends or acquaintances, or however you guys want to be, uh, referred to um my subscribers you guys have made this channel what it is today uh hell i might even have more subscribers by the time this hits uh mainstream so we'll see holy crap we're leveling up left and right i don't even know what to do with all this stuff animal husbandry was not in the game the last time i played um it was new and it was actually new when i uh did my sort of first look uh, review on Medieval Dynasty. So I was, uh, well, I was not prepared for it then either. Let me uh, chop down another tree or two, give myself some wood to work with. And then I think in the next episode, we're gonna have to try automating some things. We still need a few more buildings before I'd be completely comfortable. Um, getting some people from the towns and it's sometimes it's not easy to get people from the towns i don't know if they've changed the way that that works but um if they haven't we should be able to actually get somebody from town pretty quick we just need to find somebody with the right statistics to actually do uh the work that we need so where did i stop i stopped right here so Oops. Oh, um, I know I just asked you two questions. The first one being how the videos are cut. The second one being how the dialogue and storyline is presented. This one is more a question for, uh, I guess, all of you. I And this is not terribly important to me, but if you guys find it important or... Uh, endearing or however you want to describe it if you guys find it pertinent uh, I'd really like you to answer this question how would you guys like to be referred to um, some I I was on Twitter the other day I was and YouTube of all places uh, pr you know they uh, said hey um, how do you address your subscribers and some of them i mean there's a lot of people on there there's one guy um he calls all of his people samurai and then he goes on to explain that uh you know samurai were this and that and and they were all about this and all about that and aside from the fact that he's completely full of crap he calls all of his followers samurai because they adhere to whatever his version of samurai was um whether it's wrong or not, it doesn't really matter. What matters is his community likes to be called Samurai. So uh, there's that. There's people, I follow a couple of people that call all of their, um, all of their subscribers and whatnot, like uh, RCE, the Real Civil Engineer. Um, I'll probably put his link in the description. He calls all of his subscribers fellow engineers. So... Uh, what would you guys like to be called? Uh, obviously, keep it keep it appropriate. I'm not gonna call you my fellow dumbasses or something like that. That's just that's not me. I have more respect for you guys, even if you don't. Um, we're going to put the barn right up to here, since we have the barn. And I read that they the barn is where you make. Oh, oh, 
Oh, I can. Perfect. Barn's going right there, then. Should probably put on that so you guys can see. There we go. Put those in there. Um, what do you guys want to be called? Uh, like I said, so some of my subscribers, they're, they call them fellow survivors or um, nerds or endearingly. They, it's not just like, you nerd. It's like... Um, the so the uh, YouTuber I'm thinking of, Guns, Nerds, and Steel. He calls them... I don't think he calls them nerds. I think he calls them something else. Ah, oh, jeez. I can't really remember. One of the things they never tell you about starting a YouTube channel is that you don't really have enough time to watch all of your subscriber subscriptions anymore. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still try and catch them as often as I can, and especially when I'm editing because my editing software takes a minute to render. Um, I'll pull up a YouTube video and, you know, watch it do its thing. I hope that tree doesn't explode when I finish this foundation. Actually, that's going to make me nervous. Let me just... Oh, whoops. Not the axe I wanted to use, but it's the axe I picked up. Whatever. So... Now that I have tried to ask the question about a half a dozen times and failed, what do you want to be called? What would you like to be referred to or have we not gotten there yet? Is our community not big enough to have a title yet? Maybe we haven't discovered our own style well enough. Let me know in the comments below. I'll take suggestions at this point and we'll maybe we'll we'll wait until I hit my hundred subscribers mark and then um, then we'll decide what the community should be called. And I don't know, maybe we'll tweak it every once in a while. It's a thought. OK, logs. Sticks. Um, straw. Yeah, lots of sticks and straw. Let me put the. Oh, wait, that's right. Oh. We had. Did I seriously just get hurt from jumping off that? Uh, OK, um, let me just finish processing these trees and putting the sticks and logs in this thing, and I'll be right back with you. Well, what fortuitous timing. I just broke my uh, my hammer on the last swing. So let's pick up a log craft. Uh, why don't I have well, I don't have any sticks. OK, let's pick up some sticks, craft another. Get away from me. Craft another hammer. Hey, pick it up. Pick it up. Damn it. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Um. There and hammer. And then didn't I craft or didn't I have like a pile of logs and stuff that I dropped way down there? Because, yeah, I see a log. Because I dropped a bunch of logs and some sticks and firewood. That's right. OK, uh, let's grab that and wait, where to go? There it is. Cause that was like 75 sticks. Sweet. Um, grab those two logs and I'll speed this up and see you back up there. All right. Finally, as we trudge up the hill at a bajillion and one centimeters an hour. Ugh. And no, bajillion is not a real number. Okay, now we just need some straw. Hopefully I grabbed enough straw and put it in storage last time that I don't need to go harvest some. Straw is the bane of my existence in this game. It seems to be the one thing I always need a ton of. And the first couple of times that I played this game way back when it was really young um 
they didn't have any sources of straw inland. So you basically had to come down to this river or really hope that you could find some some wheat in like a vendor's inventory. Pain in the butt. But uh, let's get this all strawed out. All right, so uh, it looks like we just need like eight more logs and then we should be good to go. Uh, so let's get a chopping. All right, there we go. Ah, uh, it's pretty as a picture, ain't it? The uh, farm is coming along nicely. The farmlands are mostly back there. Um, got one orchard there, one orchard there, and the rest of it there. Now, this said that there was a rat threshing. Oh, cool. Uh, we have some wheat. We can thresh out quern. No, I don't need to make any flour right now. Uh, here we go. Animal feed fertilizer. I need manure or rot. And I think I have some rot, but I don't think it's going to make enough manure or enough fertilizer. Let's see. We might have to go take some of those coins that we earned and go, uh, go, hmm, take care of that. All right, so that has been another episode of Medieval Dynasty. Uh, today we were able to uh, finish some of Unigos' story. Uh, we got, uh, we learned about Sambor and uh, the fact that he used to be a medieval torturer, which uh, I have a story for you about that much later. I hope I'll remember, but um, yeah. This has been a super fun uh, experience thus far. Uh, we didn't end up finishing the planting of the field, so we're going to... Um, I'm going to gather my inventory, sleep until the morning so we can start fresh when you guys can see everything, and we will see how much fertilizer we can use, how much we need. We might have to make a run into town to buy, like... Uh, fertilizer, animal manure, or something like that. But uh, if you did like the content, don't forget to like, subscribe, all those fun things. Join me on Twitter and Discord. It's free to use, and it shows support for me, which I much appreciate. Join me on Patreon if you're feeling particularly generous. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.